Uh, again, good morning. My name is Brian Diaz. I'm the Olympic Region Local Programs Engineer. And uh, again, I have uh, Brian Moorhead and Bob Berg with me, uh, who are the team that uh, work in your area. We put all of our uh, email addresses there so you can contact us later if, uh, or not if, when uh, the appropriate time comes. So today's uh, topic is key steps to success with federal funding. Uh, th these are, this uh, presentation was based on uh, issues that we see that current, that um, routinely crop up when uh, folks are putting in funding packages. So this is kind of a uh, beginner's um, introduction to federal funding and um, I think it'll last about 10 to 15 minutes uh, in the presentation, and then we'll have about uh, 10 to 15 minutes for general discussion and questions afterwards. So one of the key things to remember when you've received federal fundings is the federal funding authorization timeline. And I put this in red because if, again, if you remember one thing from this presentation, remember this. Um, submit your draft funding package three months prior to any funding deadline that you have. And you are probably asking yourself, well, why so long? Well, first off, typically it takes two to three rounds of review to have a complete uh, funding package uh, with no issues. Um, so again, that two to three rounds of review can typically burn, you know, three, four weeks. The second issue is, is that our headquarters, once we have a complete um, package ready to send to headquarters, it could take them one to two weeks to get the funding lined up as well. Uh, there, the other reason we ask that you uh, submit a draft three months is that if you have issues with the STIP, NEPA, or your prospectus, uh, that can also burn uh, four to six weeks. Uh, and then there's just the general processing. It used to be a lot of this was paper. Uh, you know, we were signing things and sending hard copies. Now all of the funding can be done electronically. So that can speed things up when things go right. So again, key slide here. Uh, please submit your draft funding packages three months prior to the funding deadline. Now, I mentioned the STIP earlier. I think everyone's familiar with the STIP, but the STIP is the number one project stopper. Uh, for your project to move forward and receive federal funds, it must be on the current approved STIP. You can check to see if your project is on this uh, blue uh, highlighted area um, on the local programs website. Um, it's important to remember that the STIP expires at the end of the year. So that while your project may have been on the STIP uh, when you submitted a package in um, October, um, if it still hasn't been authorized, your project has to be reloaded on the STIP. Uh, to have your project reloaded on the STIP, talk to whoever gave you the grant. Uh, if your project is not on the STIP, it can take four to six weeks to get that uh, loaded um, back on the STIP. And you can see the schedule for that on the local programs website. Uh, lastly, when you are, if your project is not on the STIP or if you have issues with the STIP, for example, the description in the STIP does not match the length of the project in your prospectus, or you have other conflicts between um, NEPA and the STIP, um, you're, you know, your project will not go forward for federal funding. So make sure that the STIP uh, project description matches all the other documents in your funding package. So again, that's, that's something, uh, a showstopper that we really can't do much about. All right, now I'm going to talk about uh, key steps to um, successful Fed funding um, by phase. So if you are trying to get a PE phase authorized, uh, the first thing that you should do is review chapters 21 and 22 of the LAG manual. Um, and also, it, when putting your 
uh, funding package together, use the uh, funding authorization checklist, um, chapter 21 of the LAG manual. Uh, you must request a DBE goal as well uh, to send along with that uh, funding package if you're going to use consultants. So if, again, if you are going to use consultants to do some of this design work, you'll have to have a goal associated with that uh, consultant contract and work. Um, and again, work with Bob and Brian in requesting that goal. Uh, um, when you are filling out your local agency agreement, um, if you're using consultants, you must break that funding out in a separate consultant line. And I'll show you what we're talking about there in a minute. Um, and your project should also have a state line because if you need any state services um, assistance, um, a state line, or a funding bucket in the local agency agreement allows those services to be paid for. And of course, we I'll say this over and over, your project must be on the current approved STIP and your prospectus must match the grant. So what, what we have here is the funding box of a local agency agreement for a PE phase. And you can see, um, my, the arrow here, you see when I mention agency line. So basically that's just saying that on this particular project, there's $99,000 that the agency can use to do the PE work. And you also see here is a $10,000 state line. So uh, if um, you need a review from WashDOT or you want a, some help in any way from WashDOT, those funds, uh, uh, can pay for the that work. And I also mentioned uh, that you could have a consultant line. Maybe your agency is not going to do your own PE work. In that case, there would be another um, line. Uh, we'd replace this other um, with consult, we'd put the word consultant in there and then you would list the funds uh, for your um, work right there. So that's, that was talking about uh, successfully putting together a funding package for uh, your PE phase. So now let's talk about, uh, say you've moved beyond the PE phase and you're ready to start a right-of-way phase. Um, same, same recommendations, review chapters 21 and 22 and use the, um, of the LAG manual and use the checklist, um, chapter 21 of the LAG. Again, your project must be on the current approved STIP. And when you're um, submitting for right-of-way funding, you have to have a, uh, a right-of-way plan. You have to have a project funding estimate. And if there's any relocations as part of this uh, right-of-way acquisition, you have to have a relocation plan. Uh, keep in mind that the, the uh, plan and the estimate um, will need to be reviewed by local programs prior to um, submitting. So there could be a little back and forth. Um, on, um, another key thing to remember when you're um, thinking about your project in terms of right-of-way is that a TCE or a temporary construction easement is considered a right-of-way activity. So if you are not, you know, you're not acquiring, you don't need any permanent right-of-way for your project. If you do need to get some easements from somebody to build the job, that is considered a right-of-way activity by the Federal Highway, and you will need to get uh, a right-of-way. In the end, before going to construction, you'll have to have a right-of-way certification. So, you know, remember any, whether you're actually acquiring property or you're re you are requiring um, temporary property rights, those are all considered right-of-way activities. Uh, the next uh, slide here, we will discuss uh, successful, successfully constructing or successful funding for a construction phase. Uh, again, review chapters 21, 22, and use the lag checklist. Make sure your project's on the current approved step. Uh, if, if you had um, acquired any sort of right-of-way, uh, you will need a right-of-way cert. And Eva Betts is our current um, 
uh, right away uh, person in local programs that will um, work with you in your uh, area. Um, you will need uh, approved NEPA to go to construction. You will need a DBE goal uh, requested for the construction work. And you will also, if you're gonna use a um, consultant to do your construction management, you will also need a goal for that as well. And um, requesting that goal is, there's a form in, a, in the lag manual appendix 31.94. That's the form that you would use to request a DBE goal when you're using consultants to do your construction management. Uh, you, if Again, if you are using um, a consultant, you're gonna have a consultant line on your local agency agreement. You will have um, a state line. Oftentimes uh, a local agency will request a ROM um, to help with their materials uh, documentation or other things can be requested from the state that will require a means to pay for it. Uh, you will also wanna make sure that your prospectus matches um, NEPA in the STIP. Uh, and you will have a PSNE at this stage that uh, must be approved by local programs and that you will submit to Brian and Bob and you will, um, and they will review it and, and um, let you know if there's any uh, issues. The, the main thing that that review, we're, we're not gonna re really be looking at technical aspects of your ps &E, mostly that your division one specs uh, meet federal requirements. So um, this next slide shows the, a, the funding um, portion of a local agency agreement um, that deals with a construction phase. So up here on the top, I've highlighted that you see a little yellow box up there and you see two dates, project agreement end date and project advertisement date. So when you put your, your funding package together, the project agreement end date should be the, la the last uh, day that you expect your uh, contract to run until completion and then add three years. So uh, you wanna give yourself uh, on this agreement plenty of time to wrap up this uh, construction activity uh, so that your local agency agreement doesn't expire uh, prior to the completion of the work. Uh, it, if your uh, agreement expires, then um, funding is no longer in re is no longer reimbursable. So it's important to give yourself plenty of time with that project agreement end date. And again, you know, figure out what your last construction, what last possible construction date is till you're complete, and then add three years and put that date in there. And, it, and it'll always be an end of year too, uh, you know, December 30th. You know, if it's always uh, bring it to the last part of, of whatever year um, three years is. Now, there's also the proposed advertisement date. Now, that date is typically going to be the date um, that you're anticipating your funding is authorized. You know, the date that you get the letter back from Stephanie Tax uh, saying that your funding is available um, and then add six weeks. So that's how the um, advertisement date is determined on here. Uh, the so looking at this, um, you see uh, line K in, under the construction here at the lower portion of this box, you see there's 1,387,000 uh, for the contractor. So that those are contract um, funds that the contractor can charge against. Then if you look down to line O, you see that there's 115,000 that's been set up for the agency to spend um, doing uh, their own construction management. Then you see a state line for $10,000. Um, so, you know, if you had a, a consultant on board, you would see another line here for a consultant. So um, hopefully that gives you a little understanding of the different, you know, when we say state line, um, you know, contract line, agency line, what all that means. 
Now, some other helpful hints and thoughts when using federal funds. So um, try to consolidate your federal funds on a single project if possible, and try to avoid sprinkling small amounts of Fed funds in other city or state funded projects. And the reason for that is that when you're using federal funds, it adds a lot of complexity, cost, and oversight um, to a project. Um, you'll have to uh, be involved in uh, DBE uh, tracking, the Buy America program tracking uh, foreign steel. You'll have a, a right-of-way certification. You'll have uh, you know, NEPA, Form 1273, there's a lot of federal requirements that um, are triggered when you're using state funds. So if, or excuse me, federal funds. So if you, if you do get federal funds, it's, it's always advisable to try to consolidate them in a particular project. And key, uh, key takeaways, uh, last slide before we get into questions is uh, always remember contact uh, our office, local programs office uh, early. We're happy to help you. This is uh, what we're here for. Um, and submit a draft package to us three months prior to your funding deadline. And the, one of the reasons that um, I avoided getting into a lot of technical detail and reviewing all the different scenarios with funding in this presentation is because unless you're regularly doing funding, um, there are so many different scenarios that you can run into in dealing with federal funding that I it, it would be hard for anybody to remember and keep it straight. And so uh, I, we focused on the basics. Uh, I focused on the basics in this. And again, if you remember nothing else, simply when you're ready to put your funding together, um, wh whatever, whenever your uh, funding deadline is, just uh, put a draft funding package together and get it to us three months prior and we will work through and make sure that you have all the, uh, everything is uh, filled out correctly, you have all the right elements and uh, get your funding lined up. So any questions, uh, thoughts? Hearing none. Ryan, thank that's... you for doing that. Uh, thanks for doing that. That's pretty impressive that you whittled it down to the top two or three issues that always seem to cause a lot of consternation. One of the things that I find redeeming is that, yes, it takes three months, but you might be back again and doing that whole another three rounds because it's a supplement, whether you get a new chunk of money or something has shifted with your budget drastically, it is possible to move money between lines. Can you speak to that a little more? Um, I think I can, but I would like to give the opportunity to maybe uh, Brian or Bob to talk about um, shifting of money between phases. But you're right. I mean, we, we do that all the time if you have a leftover money. But Brian, you want to elaborate on that or Bob? Well, there's not much to elaborate on. Uh, yes, anytime you need to move money around, we can do it with the supplement. And uh, it doesn't take as long as a new, new project, new phase. Uh, the requirements are lesser. Um, but again, get it to us early. Uh, Bob and or I will uh, check it and it'll still be two or three back and forths between your agency and our office to even get a, a simple supplement all correct before we okay you to get the, uh, the signatures on it for processing. So, um, And that assumes there's a stip amendment in there too? Correct. So that's your time plus whatever time to get the stip amended. Well, I was I was kind of uh, assuming a zero dollar change, but okay. yes, if there's an increase, yes, we're going to need to see that increase of federal funds on the stip and the whole bit. But you don't have to amend the stip to move funds from a PE phase to a construction phase. 
or right of way phase to construction phase? The stip doesn't have to be amended to do a supplement like that. No. Nice. The 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 your we can we can move money forward, Sarah, or around. Once it's been obligated, it's off the stip. When there's new money, um, new grant funds being brought into the project, that's where it needs to be in the stip. I have another question bouncing off of what Michael Bateman wrote in the chat. Um, if you have a really such a thing as a simple and straightforward project, there is no heavy NEPA, there's no right away, but you still have to go through, the, through a process to prove that. There's still responsibilities for the local agency to fill out paperwork for saying that there's no right away required and you have a categorical exclusion for NEPA. Can you speak to that? Um, other than to say yes, that um, you that most projects are end up with a NEPA CE um, category exclusion, um, saying that there's you know no um, no significant effects, but um, there yeah I mean you must do that. I mean that's that's we need we will need that paperwork saying that and I'm, I'm not aware of any way, way around that. So that's just, that's just a requirement for Fed funding, yes. Mm -hmm. I think the, the best, best takeaway is that even the simplest projects are not as simple as you would think and talk to these guys early and often and they will help you stay out of trouble. Marty, you got a question? Marty. Yeah. Yes, I do, I got a question. So, Brian, you're saying that um, you were showing that I can't remember what what document that was, but to know the meaning of all those different um, things on the document, is there a is there a place you can go to uh, study that and know to figure out what all those mean? Everything that's on those documents. Well, again, I yeah, Marty, uh, I would say it. Uh, chapter 21 and 22 of the lag manual if you look through there you're going to get it, it'll that, and by the way that was the local agency agreement and i focused in on just the funding box of that because that's where people sent you know seem to have the biggest challenge but if i blew that up it might be more familiar to you um but that that was the local agency agreement of um and uh, yeah if you look at so a couple things you can do look at look through the lag manual uh chapters uh 21, 22. Also, don't uh, hesitate if you have any questions to, you know, reach out to me or Bob or Brian. We're happy to go over um, your pro any project that you're interested in. Um, if you're filling out a new one you, or you want to use an old one to, re to review and, you know, understand what should be in on there, uh, we're, we're happy to do it. We find that the best way to train people on uh, filling out the um, funding document is just to um, talk with you through the actual one you're doing at the time, because each one is unique. Um, you know, I could, uh, it's truly, the, everyone is different. And so to give you one cookie cutter method of say, well, this is how you do funding, I guarantee you the next one will be somewhat different. Hope that helps, Marty. Yes, help. Thank you. And I had one more question is that uh, I know there's not a lot of roads out here that we have on the tribe, but there is uh, one particular, I think that you guys have it on the uh, plan, was that plan is to do a roundabout at 106, 101 junction. Is that correct? And if there was, is there any way that um, that we could work together on something like that to see if we could get that expedited, get done quicker to uh, do a roundabout there. If I had funding here for roads, if we could both work on paying towards that, you know? Yeah, we do that all. We, we do that all the time with local agencies. You know, I, 
Uh, but, you know, to answer your question, when, when that roundabout is scheduled for, you know, uh, construction and all, I, off the top of my head, I don't know. But if you send me an email um, at that email address at the first slide, I'll forward that to uh, Joseph Perez, our um, uh, project development engineer, and also our uh, send it to our um, program manager. And then they can get, will tell you when that is scheduled for construction, who has the design. And yeah, then you can start, you know, you can talk with them because they're the people that are putting the project together on the wash dot side. And, and yes, we can start that dialogue. If you want to participate somehow, we can set up an agreement where if you obtain some kind of funding, you can include that uh, to, um, you know, help uh, augment the uh, project funding and get it moving. And, and we do that, you know, fairly often. Um, I the only thing I would say is that there are some risks in when WashDOT changes its priority. So unfortunately, from time to time, a local agency will obtain some funding with some deadline and uh, will partner up with WashDOT and then Wash dots, like what happened recent a couple of years ago with I-976, then all of Wash Dot's funding priorities shifted and some local agencies were then left kind of holding the bag. Uh, I don't think that would be the case from what you're describing, but you know, just in before entering into you know a cooperative agreement where you're on the hook to provide something for some federal funding, we want to make sure that Wash Dot is very um, certain that they're going to move forward with their project on a certain timeline. All right, thank you. So, Brian, uh, are you? It sounds like you're you're totally the the first place you want to start with a partnership. If your local agency is thinking about how a future road project or trail project is going to affect your community, it'd be a good place to to call you up and find out if there's a way to partner and make sure you fully understand the project and how your TIP works with the state's um, program? Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you have a project that somehow intersects or connects, you know, connects up to the state route, yeah, by all means, uh, you know, let me know. Um, and I can, what I'll do, is what I just mentioned to Marty. If you know, if you have some schedule and timeline for doing your project, uh, I will. I can find out the schedule on the WashDOT side and which project has which project manager has that work, and get everybody together and talking about how you know those uh, different scopes can be merged for a, you know a, a bigger, better project. Wow, looks like we have whittled ourselves down to um, Jonathan, Moam, Michael Bateman, Marty. Um, do any of you others have questions for the Brian, Brian, and Bob team? I think, we're, I, I think we've come close to our adjournment time, so I just want to make sure there's none other questions out there. Do you have any last words yeah, for see, us? I, I suspect it's, uh, I see it's noon and I suspect people are probably ready for lunch. So <laughs> I, I'm, i uh, yeah, thinking they're ready to, ready to go. Yeah. Mm, possibly. Good, good to see you guys. Thanks for, uh, thanks for continuing on the great legacy of local programs, helping all of us local agencies out. It's, uh, you guys have always been fantastic for us here in Paulsbo and, uh, Everybody that's always that I've always worked with at local programs has been great. Every time you call, like when Mark was there, and you call Mark, he said, "I think I'm in trouble. I need some help." <laughs> He's like, the answer, the answer will always be yes. I will always get you there in the end, and it might be painful along the way. No problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, that's the key. I mean, we're we'll help you any way we can, and yeah. that's what we're that's what we're here to do. And and like yep. you say, it's sometimes frustrating, but uh, uh, you guys are always great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. It's no no different than you know us working the other way with the citizens. You know we're we'll we'll get you there somehow. <laughs> yeah, Brian, Brian, and Bob, thanks for the good reminders. And I think 
sometimes some of the only confusion that, that I get is when it's state funding versus Fed and you're trying to follow the log manual and then there's a few things that are different with the state funding. Uh, that's always a little uh, little challenging going back and forth and making sure we're getting the right the right items or not including the things that we really don't need to um, with the state funding. Um, but but other than that, good. Uh, um, Brian Moorhead is embrained in my head. Read the lag manual. It'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same way. You can start off a project with one managing agency, but as soon as you put some color of money that relates to you guys, we know we need to reach for the lag manual. Yep. Sarah and Ed, do you have any last words for us before we adjourn? No, I just wanted to thank again, uh, pile on to the local program praise here. Thank you for making the time to do this and and we'll probably ch check in with you every so often and just help our folks. I know that you don't have anything to do with sort of the obligation authority targets that they're all hitting, but it's these types of um, uh, updates and reminders help help us meet those targets and, and that's really important. So um, thank you for helping helping our local partners. Well, one last thing I'd just like to mention before I uh, sign out here is that I heard before I came in, I heard a little bit discussion about other training. So don't uh, hesitate, you know, there's our LTAP site on the um, local programs uh, website that has all sorts of uh, uh, training opportunities and videos there. And if you feel like you need uh, some training or discussion like this on right away on uh, uh, NEPA, you know, whatever, we have all the experts in our headquarters that can direct you to videos or even do some of these talks. So, you know, as you have these meetings, if you find, uh, oh, I'm, you know, we're really confused about NEPA or something, I can have Jody Beal talk or I can have Eva come talk about right away. And so we can do those kinds of things too. Mm -hmm. Super, thank you. Hey, on that, on yeah. that note, you, you, you folks used to offer a construction documentation training um, do you still, I haven't seen that in quite a while. Uh, I think that'd be a great item to offer again. Um, so I'm not sure if we can get something like that scheduled um, once uh, training becomes more easily available again. Um, I, I can look into it. Brian, Bob, do you have any? Um, I think it was probably like five, six years ago, you guys came up to Clown County, Brian and Bob, I think it was, and, and held one. And we, we got a lot of new people on staff that it's a very valuable training. And so to be able to have that again, I think would be would be really good. Okay, yeah, yeah I'll, we'll look into it and uh, get some set up. Thank you. And I don't, I don't mean this to be the last word, but one of my favorite key takeaways is to always know when the lag manual is being updated. And I think I have to say thank you to Willie Wanch, I don't know, or someone in his department that puts together this errata sheet that helps you understand what exactly has shifted. And and then and then it's really great to take an old timer and kind of figure out how that has to be adjusted in the way we do business. All right. Well, thank you so much. Let's go have lunch. All right. Take care, everyone. All. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care. Thank you.